In this video we're going to take a look at permutations, combinations, and also the fundamental counting principle. And let's start there. The fundamental counting principle says that if we have a number of ways to choose something, we can multiply each piece so to figure out how many different combinations there are. So if we have a situation where there's three ways to choose one thing, and two ways to choose another thing well if we multiply three and two we can find that there's a total of six ways to combine those two things so we'll start by using that in this particular situation with a restaurant where they have five main dishes seven sides and six beverages we're interested in how many different meals that can produce well the fundamental counting principle says that we can just multiply those things and that will tell us how many different meals can be produced. So we take 5 times 7 times 6, which is going to give us, let's grab our handy dandy calculator here, and we find 5 times 7, which is 35, I don't know why I put that in there, times 6 is 210. So there's 210 different meals that can be produced with five main dishes, seven sides, and six beverages. If you wanted to, you could list out all of those, but the fundamental counting principle tells us that all we need to do is multiply those numbers together to figure out how many total different meals. Okay, permutations and combinations. I think that's probably what you came for, so let's talk about that. Permutations are written in this form. We have the P and then n over here and r here and what this says is permutations of n things so this is our total number of things taken this many at a time combination is written like this again of n things taken r at a time now you say well wait a minute they look like the same thing well, they are kind of close to the same thing, but there's one very, very important difference. And that is that in a permutation, order matters. So order matters for a permutation. For a combination, order does not matter. And we'll see how that plays out as we move forward here. Order doesn't matter okay and then how do we figure those out well <clears throat> a permutation the formula is n factorial the little exclamation point over n minus r factorial a combination is very similar but since order doesn't matter what we need to do is get rid of the number of sort of repeats that we have and so the formula is very similar it starts out n factorial over on the bottom we have n minus r factorial as well the only difference is that we have an additional r factorial right there and what happens is that gets rid of the duplication when order doesn't matter so like for example in a permutation if we just had two items um, we would have A and B, let's call them item A and item B. Well, we'd have AB would be one combination, or BA would be another combination. In a combination, or would be another set, another pair, in a combination, those two would count as the same thing, because order doesn't matter. So AB would cover both of those. So what's happening with that R factorial there is it's getting rid of that duplication and we'll see how that all plays out in the different um, examples that we look at here. Okay, let's go over here and take a look at uh, a couple examples and then we'll work out some of these permutations and combinations with the factorials. Alright, this first one says we have a club with 10 people. We want to know how many ways there are to choose a president and a vice president. Well, our first question needs to be, does order matter? Well, is 
someone being president different from them being vice president? Yes. So if I had Billy for president and Joey for vice president, Joey for president and Billy for vice president would be different. So order matters. So it's going to be a permutation. So in this case, I'm, I have 10 people. So it's going to be 10 permutations of 10 things taken. How many different positions do I have? Well, president and vice president, that's two. So taken two at a time. So I'm going to use my formula here, n factorial. So my n is 10. 10 factorial over n minus r factorial. So that would be 10 minus 2 factorial. So that would be 8 factorial. Now, remember what the factorials, this really means 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then on the bottom we have the 8 factorial. That really means 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now we can cancel out a lot of stuff. Notice how we have the 8 through 1 on both the top and the bottom. So I'm going to cancel those out. Notice what I have left, just 10 times 9. So 10 times 9 is, of course, 90. So there are 90 different ways to choose a president and a vice president for this particular club. Whew, that's a lot. Okay. Let's take a look at this next one. We have a tennis team. There's eight players. We want to know how many different pairs there would be for a doubles competition. Well, does order matter? Hmm. Is the pair of Billy and Joey the same as the pair of Joey and Billy? Yeah. The team is a team of two people regardless of the order. So that's going to be a combination. So for this one, we're going to have eight, because that's our total number of players, eight choose. Sometimes we call a combination eight choose two. The number of combinations of eight items taken two at a time. Okay, so we're going to use our formula here, and it's n factorial, so eight factorial over, this one is r factorial times n minus r factorial, so that'd be 6 factorial. Then remember that this is really all this here, we broke it out one other time, 8 times 7 times 6 and so on. This one is really 6, so notice that what's going to cancel out is everything below the 6, so on top I'm going to have an 8 times 7 left. Then on the bottom, I have 2 factorial. Well, that would be 2 times 1, which is just going to be 2, of course. I can do a little simplification here. 2, that would be 1. That would be 4. Then I multiply those things, multiply across. 4 times 7 divided by 1 would be just 28. So there's 28 different pairs that could be made from this tennis team for doubles out of 8 players. Okay? So, because order didn't matter. All right, let's figure out a few of these where we're already given the permutation or combination. We're just asked to find exactly what it is. So, this first one, the permutation, that's going to use this formula right here. Let me just switch colors again quick so we can kind of keep all this stuff straight. We have 4 is our n, so 4 factorial over n minus r. So that would be 4 minus 3 factorial, which would be 1 factorial. 4 factorial would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 1 factorial is just 1. Multiply this all out. We have 4 times 3, which would be 12, times 2 would be 24. So 4 are permutations of 4 items taken 3 at a time. We would have 24. All right, let's take a look at this next one here. Again, permutation, so we're going to use this formula. So we have 5 factorial over n minus r, so it would be 5 minus 2, so that would be 3 factorial. 
then remember the stuff's going to cancel out. The 3, 2, 1 are going to cancel out on both. So I'm going to be left with just 5 times 4 on top, which is going to give me 20. So that gives me 20. All right, then combinations. Now, notice how things are going to change here because we did permutations of five things taken two at a time. Now we're going to do combinations of five things taken two at a time. So again, on top, it's going to be 5 factorial over r factorial, which is 2 factorial. And then we have n minus r, which would be 3 factorial. Then remember that what's left when we look at these two is just 5 times 4. 2 factorial is going to be 2 times 1. Do a little simplification here. We end up with 5 times 2 over 1, which would be just 10. So notice, there's half as many if we're not interested in order. And that's going to be the case virtually all the time. There's usually less combinations than there are permutations when order doesn't matter. Okay, so this last one, we'll go ahead and 6 factorial over, well, r is 1, so 1 factorial. And then we have n minus r, so 6 minus 1 would be 5 factorial. Then everything's going to cancel out. The 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 are going to cancel out because of these two. And we're left with just a 6 on top. And 1 factorial will be just 1, so 6 over 1, which just gives us 6. One other thing to look for, if we end up with a 0 factorial, Remember that 0 factorial is defined as 1. So if you end up with a 0 on the bottom, it's not 0, it's 1. Because remember, we can't divide by 0. So that would get us into some trouble. All right, so permutations and combinations. Remember, we use permutations when order matters. And we use combinations when order does not matter. The formulas are very, very similar. The only difference is this r factorial which gets rid of the duplication. Notice how here there are two combinations, here there's just one because order didn't matter. BA is the same if we're dealing with combinations. Also remember the fundamental counting principle which says if we just multiply the possibilities we can get the total number of combinations that can come out of that. I hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math.